Hey gang and welcome to your very first step in becoming an HTML and CSS ninja. Okay then gang, so I've decided to do a complete update of my HTML and CSS series and bundle them into one complete beginner friendly course because I think the old playlists are a bit out of date now, about four years old, and I wanted to rebuff them to include some more modern features and I also want to keep this channel really accessible to new developers and I wanted to create a kind of entry point, a series for new front-end developers to come along and get the basics, the lowdown of HTML and CSS. So if you're a new web developer, this is the place to start. So rather than do a whole course for HTML and a whole separate course for CSS, I've bundled these two together because they do go hand in hand very much. So this course is designed to get you up and running with both of these, HTML and CSS, in no time, so that pretty soon you can start making your own awesome websites. So then, in this course, we're gonna be working from the ground up, and I presume that you don't have any, or you have at least very little experience with coding. So we're gonna cover all of the basics from the start, what HTML and CSS actually are, and I'm also gonna show you how to set up a development environment on your computer. I'm going to show you how to make your first HTML web page and also how to make that web page look awesome with CSS. Now, we're also going to be talking about newer, more modern HTML5 features to bring your code up into the present day. And we're going to be touching on responsive mobile design as well. And then finally, we're going to bundle everything together that we've learned to make a web project from scratch. And that project is going to look something like this. It's called Mario Club and features Mario over here. And it's a nice, modern, simple website, uses loads of different HTML features, loads of different CSS features as well. And it's also fully responsive, so it looks pretty good on mobile screens as well as larger screens. So we're going to be putting everything together that we learn throughout this course into this final project over here. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Okay then, so before we start to code anything whatsoever, I just wanna take a few minutes to talk about what HTML actually is and also what CSS is. Just so we've got a vague overview of what these two things are before we dive into the code. So HTML, first of all, it stands for Hypertext Markup Language, HTML, that's where we get the name from. And it's a markup language, not a programming language. So we use HTML to structure content on a web page, things like text, images, and forms, and all that kind of jazz. And we do that by using what's known as HTML tags. Now, tags represent different types of content or information on a web page. For example, we'd have a certain tag for an image, a certain tag for a form or paragraph text, etc. Now, you might also hear these being described as HTML elements, but they are pretty much one and the same thing. Now, if we take a look at some sample tags, we can see some of them, like the paragraph tag, they have an opening tag and a closing tag with some information in between them. So that's the opening and closing. Same with the anchor tag. These are for links, opening and closing. And the closing tag has this forward slash before the letter that represents that tag. Now, a lot of tags use this opening and closing tag structure, but some of them just have one tag. For example, the image tag right here. Now, don't worry about remembering all of these different tags at the minute. We're going to do all of that later on. I'm just giving you a quick overview. So imagine this is the HTML content that makes up a part of a web page. If we were to view that in a browser, it could look something like this. So the paragraph text is rendered at the top like that. The link is right here and the image is at the bottom. So when we view a web page in a browser, it's just an HTML file that we're viewing. So we use these different kinds of tags inside the HTML file to tell the browser what type of content we want each part of the document to be and the order that it should be in. Then the browser renders that HTML content into a viewable web page that we can browse online. So HTML is the core language that provides the backbone of a website. And it's all to do with how we structure content using these different types of tags. Now, CSS is the second part of the puzzle when it comes to building websites or web pages, and it stands for Cascading Style Sheets. Now, we'll talk about why it's called this later on, but essentially, CSS is a separate language that goes hand in hand 
with HTML. And what we do is use CSS to style our web page and make them look even better. So HTML alone just structures the content that we want to show on a web page, but CSS is what makes that content look better. So we'd use CSS in conjunction with an HTML file to tell the browser things like what color different bits of content on a page should be, or what font size the different headings or paragraph text should be, whether something should be on the left or the right of the page, or maybe what the background image of the web page should be. So whereas HTML is very much to do with providing the actual content and structure to the browser, CSS then takes on the role of styling that content. So much like a builder would form the structure of a house, a painter and decorator would then come in and style it to make it look nicer. So Imagine we had some HTML before CSS applied to it. It might look like this in the browser and then CSS applied to it. It would look like this in the browser. So much, much nicer. So these are the two languages that we're going to be looking at in depth in this course. And by the end, you should be able to use both of them to build your own well-structured websites, which look awesome as well. Okay then gang, so the first thing we need to do before we write any code is to set up a local development environment to work with. And by that, I generally mean just have a good text editor to code in and a modern browser to preview your work in. So there's loads of different text editors that you can use for web development. And which one you use is down to your preference and your preference alone. There is no right or wrong text editor to use. I like this one at the minute, Visual Studio Code, but I do flip between different ones when I feel like it. But this one is completely free for Windows or Mac, and it comes with a load of nice packages as well that we can install to make coding easier. So that's what I'll be using, and if you want to follow along exactly like I do and use the packages that I do as well, and I would advise you to do that if you're a beginner, then go ahead and download this right here. To get it, you just need to go to code.visualstudio.com. The link is going to be down below. But if you don't want to download this, you could also use a different text editor. Sublime is a popular one, which is also free. Well, the preview version is free, and then it asks you to buy it after a while. So you can get that right here at sublimetext.com. The link to that is going to be down below as well. Another good one is Atom. I used to use this, but I found that it started to get a bit slow on startup. But again, it's a really nice, clean text editor that you can install packages for. So if you want to download that, go to atom.io and grab it right here. Or if you prefer a no frills approach, you could even use something like Notepad++. I know a lot of people that still use something like that. There's nothing wrong with this. I prefer to have all of the extras in a text editor, which is why I go for something like this VS Code. So choose your text editor. Doesn't really matter which one for now. They're all going to work the same, but I am going to be using a couple of packages inside Visual Studio Code. So again, if you want to follow along exactly with me, make sure you get this one right here. So secondly, you'll want a good modern browser to preview all of your work in. I personally think that Google Chrome is the best one to develop in and to preview your work in. So if you want to download that, go to google.com forward slash Chrome. It's also going to come with a load of developer tools that we're going to talk about later on as well. So again, if you want to follow along exactly with me, make sure you download this. Okay then, so once you've downloaded and installed your text editor, boot it up and it's going to look something like this. This is Visual Studio Code. If you're opening it for the first time, then you probably will see some kind of welcome screen, which you can cross off. That's fine. If you're using a different text editor, it's going to look something like this with a file tree on the left over here and the coding window on the right. So what we need to do first of all inside Visual Studio Code is to open a folder. So let's open one. I've already created a folder, nothing inside it. So I'm going to select that for now and we should see that over here. So this is the welcome screen again. I'm going to cross that off and now we can start to create files inside this folder. So typically when we open a folder inside Visual Studio Code like this, that folder could represent our project or website and then all of our different files like HTML and CSS would go inside this folder on the left over here. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new file. Now we can do that in two ways. Either click on this thing right here, this new file icon, or right click and go to new file. And I'm going to call this index 
HTML. So when we create an HTML page, it has to end in this extension .html. That kind of defines it as an HTML file. Now, it's always a good idea as well to call your homepage HTML file index.html. And that's because when you navigate to a website such as mywebsite.com, it's going to look in the root directory for an index.html file. And if it exists, it's going to serve that up to the browser. So this is kind of like the default homepage file name, if you like. OK, then. So now we have our first HTML page. We can actually start to write some HTML code inside it. So again, remember, this is just going to be a series of tags inside this file. And those tags represent different things. Now, the first tag we should always use is the doc type tag. And that defines this document as an HTML5 document and tells the browser this so it can render it correctly. So to do that, open your angle brackets. That's how we open a tag or start a tag. Then we want an exclamation mark and then doc type and then HTML. So this is a tag called doc type, and it's a very peculiar type of tag. It's probably the only tag that starts with this exclamation mark inside it. And it basically just says, look, this is an HTML tag. So always put that at the start of your HTML files. Now, the next thing we need to do is an HTML tag. So HTML like so. And notice this, whenever I create a tag inside VS Code, then it automatically creates the closing tag for me, which is nice. So this HTML tag right here, this is kind of like the root tag of our documents. We have this at the top, then we have an HTML tag which surrounds everything else. Now inside here, we also have a head tag. So let's do that. And I'm going to come back to that in a second, but also a body tag. Now the body tag, everything inside this, this is the stuff that actually gets rendered to the browser. So the things that we see in the browser. Now, stuff inside the head over here, this is just extra information about the website, such as metadata or a title that goes at the top of a browser over here. This thing here at the top of the tab, this is the title. So we can specify things like that inside the head, but none of this actually gets rendered to the page itself that we can see inside the browser. That all goes inside the body tag. So let's start with this head and let's just create a title tag first of all and remember this title is what defines this stuff in the tab so let's call this learning HTML and save it and now we want to preview this in a browser so what we could do is right click over here and we could go to reveal in Explorer and then we get this window over here if you double click on an HTML file it's going to open that up in a browser for us and we can see the path to this HTML file. Now this is using the file protocol and we can also use something else called a local development server so that we can view this over an HTTP protocol which is what we actually view websites on but I'll show you that later. For now we're just previewing this HTML file over here in the browser. Now there's nothing inside the page just a blank canvas at the minute but we do see this title at the top learning HTML and that is coming from here where we specify it. OK then, so that's the title. Now let's actually add some content to the body, the stuff that shows inside the browser. So what I'm going to do is create a P tag first of all. Oops, not in capitals, so lowercase p. Now I want you to notice another thing that I've been doing here. Notice I've been indenting these tags right here. So I've not started them over here. And over here, I've indented them. And that's a convention when you're writing HTML files. You don't have to. It's still going to work exactly the same if you do this. However, for readability, it's always better to indent like that using tab. And actually, in VS Code, whenever we enter down into a new tag, it auto indents for us because that's what we're meant to do. OK, so inside this paragraph tag, I'm going to say hello ninjas and I'm going to save this. And then in the browser, if we just refresh, we should see that right there, very small. So I'm going to zoom in so we can see that hello ninjas right there. So right now, if we want to make a change and then preview it, all we have to do is just add something over here. So I'll do another P tag like so. And then inside, I'll say my first web page. And then I'm going to save this first of all, control S. And then over here, I have to refresh to see that. 
Now, I mentioned before that we could use a local development server to view this over HTTP instead of the file protocol. Now, you might not know what that means really, but basically HTTP is the protocol that we use to communicate with servers to view websites. Now, we don't really need to know that much about it at the time being, but if we install a package in VS Code over here, to spin up a local development server, it means we can use that protocol. And what it also means is that when we save something over here, it's gonna live refresh for us automatically so that we don't have to. So it's much easier to save and preview, save and preview without having to refresh the page. So I'm gonna show you that package. What you wanna do is click on this bottom icon down here for the extensions in VS Code and then you want to search for this live server package just up here so search for live server like that now i've already got that installed so if you click on it there should be an install button right here instead of uninstall and if you press that it's going to install it to vs code for you after it's installed it might prompt you to restart vs code so do that and then come back to your file now to get back to the file tree over here, just click on the top icon over there. Now, once that's installed, what you can do is right click anywhere inside an HTML file. It has to be an HTML file because that's what we view in a browser. And then we can go down to open with live server. So if I click this, then it's gonna open up a browser over here. And now you can see it's exactly the same content, but this time we're using an HTTP protocol and we're serving this on this right here this is otherwise known as local host you don't need to know the ins and out of this just yet just know that we're using now what's known as a local development server and that's how simple it is so now if we make a change so i could change this to hello world and save that i don't have to refresh over here it automatically refreshes for me every time we make a save to the file so that's nice and that's how i like to work now you don't have to use this Instead, if you prefer to just open it up like this, how we did before, that's absolutely fine as well. You'll just have to keep on refreshing if you want to see the page update. Okay, so now we've created this simple HTML file over here, and that is all there is to it really. It's just a series of different tags that make up a web page. Now, we're gonna see more tags later on, but for now, in this video, there's one more thing I'd like to show you and that is how to inspect an element inside the web page. So what I mean by this is right clicking something and then going to inspect at the bottom. Now, when you do this, it's gonna open up something that looks like this on the right side of the page. So let me just zoom in and we can see right here that we have our HTML outline. So it's showing us the HTML right here Ignore this, this is being injected by the live server package we installed, but this right here, this is our HTML that we created. So this whole thing that opened up over here, this is the Google Chrome Developer Tools panel. And there's loads of different useful stuff inside here that's gonna help us to develop websites. And we're gonna take a deep dive into this and the different useful things that it provides later on. For now, I just wanted to show you how you could right click an element over here, inspect it, and that's gonna show you the code over here in the developer tools panel. For example, if I open a new tab now and go to the netninja.co.uk and I right click, go to inspect, then I can see how this code is made. So if I'm ever wondering on a website how they've done something or how they've coded something, I can just right click that element and I can see how they've created that HTML code right here. And again, I can use all of these different features inside the developer tools to kind of reverse engineer this website if you like. So again, we're gonna take a look at this in a lot more depth later on. For now, I just wanted to introduce you to it. Okay then my friends, so that is your introduction to this course, HTML and CSS. And we've learned a few things. First of all, we've seen that HTML is a markup language to structure content on a web page. And I also said that CSS was a language that we use to style a web page and the two work together in tandem. Now we've also seen how to use VS Code to open a project folder and create our first HTML file. We've talked about what tags are a little and we've seen a couple of basic ones in action. And we also know that the body tag is for visible page content and the head tag is for page information like the title. Finally, we've seen how to preview a web page in a browser, either by double clicking on that HTML file in the file explorer 
or by using a local development server with a live reload. So next we'll dive deeper into the language and we're going to talk more about all of these different HTML tags that make up a web page.